Hello folks, it's Tobin. I'm very excited. I have exciting news. I'm excited about exciting news. I didn't think I was going to get around to refactoring the quality of life dashboard until October at the earliest and it was going to take till the end of the year. Well, some things in my schedule flipped around and I've been busting ass the last couple of weeks on a quality of life dashboard refactoring and it is ready for me to share it. I'm not completely done. There are some things I want to add, but everything that's there seems to be working okay. So I'm going to tweak a few things and I'm going to do the thing where I make a tutorial video on how to take your own data and make your own dashboard with it. Because in the process of practicing that before I make the video, I usually find stuff that I need to fix. So they're not completely done, but it's a plenty good enough state to share and you can see what it does and if you're we're looking to make an own, your own version of the dashboard I would go with this repo with this version rather than the old one and the new one's in a whole new repo reason being is the old one was just so old and crufty and big plus when I started that repo I didn't know uh, you know really smart things like maybe you shouldn't uh, have git watch your your Bower and Node folders. So when you go to clone that you, and you don't do like a, you know, a shallow clone, you end up with like 100 megabytes of just crap. So, whole new repo for this, starting over. And let's just take a quick look and I'll tell you a little bit about what I did and how it works. Bam! So it looks like this. Uh, you know, if you've been following along, you'll know the embed map that I did has this exact same look looks very similar. I've made this out like the quality of life dashboard. You'll see the logos even the same. I just turned it into a queue. I'm never going to get away with that. Someone's going to, uh, at the group of people working on this, are going to come up with a really nasty Corel Draw logo to use instead. But for now, I got something pretty. Uh, all of the metric measurements are moved over to the left. And this, by the way, is based on a material design, one of their sample templates that I use for GeoPortal as well. So you can pick uh, different things and it'll update all the stuff. You'll notice I used to have that really weird chart over here that did three different things. Now since it has a legend over here in this table of contents and that's not doing double, fa double duty, I have a uh, data distribution chart, which is just like a scatter plot, and the trend. So you can see how all this stuff is going. You select stuff the same kind of way. When you select stuff, it'll appear on the chart here and you get a different trend line. And it'll appear down here in your data table. And this data table for a download does not require a server side component anymore. It's all client side for IE and everything else which is very nice. I made a blog post on that. It was uh, slightly unpleasant to do, but it works great. So that's your metric switching. There's your map, works like you expect a map too. You know, this is all Mapbox GLJS. So you can slip the choropleth underneath the roads and buildings and stuff. See, so you can, you don't have that terrible problem of where your coral pleth is sitting on top of your base map and you can either see your base map or you can see your coral pleth but there's not a opacity setting in the world that lets you do a good job of seeing both so that's all fixed so what else the metric boxes that were over on the right are now in the table of contents this is very handy for the embed map as well and it makes it all small and all in the same place and down here in your description, it gives a description, the units from your metadata. And where I used to give a total, if it were a weighted metric and you had raw units, you could show up along with this numbers in a giant mess of uh, garbage. Now they're down here in this paragraph, so you can still get to them, but it's not cluttering up the main thing you want to see. So you scroll down, you got your report options, and here's your print map and your full report. Notice this doesn't say print and bed map anymore even though that's where it goes to. You can clear selected, we'll get rid of this table. It's got your list of custom geography selectors if you use that sort of thing. Notice the smooth zooming, ooh, thank you Mapbox GLJS. 
And here's the search, works the same way you expect a search to work, like we'll go to neighborhood two. Yes, our neighborhoods are numbers. Yes, that's a bad idea. Uh, what can I tell you? So your metadata, blah, 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 blah. Believe it or not, we have somebody that like writes all this crap for all 82 metrics. Um, I don't know how to tell them that no one reads this, but it is awfully pretty. Go down here. Now I have, beside the contact stuff, I have uh, the actual embed code is here too. So you don't have to go flipping out to that print map, which the map is sized more like you'd do for a print. Instead, it's just going based off this map up here. And you can get that exact same map uh, out for an embed map. And that's, in a nutshell, how it works. It's a lot cleaner and simpler than it used to be. There's a lot of those links. Oh, the year changer. I just changed it into this simple thing because the whole the slider was really hard for uh, mobile devices. It was hard to use, and no one really wanted to use that play button. And the play button would start playing, but depending on how quick you could fetch data, it might, yeah, it's a big mess. So now it just puts all the years out available for that metric. And all that stuff updates and happy. So how does it work? Well, it's uh, material design light for the framework. Uh, no particular reason. I kind of like it. I particularly like this template. It has an example for this kind of site. I still like Bootstrap. You know what's weird? The My big thing hang out with Bootstrap now is it requires jQuery and it just feels like I, I just don't don't want to use jQuery anymore. Now, it's super awesome, but I just feel like it's kind of cheating. It's a big library that you for today's browsers you don't need as much. I still like Bootstrap, but I use Material Design Lite mostly now. The map is Mapbox GLJS version 0.21. There's a bug in all the versions since that for Internet Explorer, which is really interesting. For IE and Edge, you pull up a map once, it draws, you pull it up, refresh the page, it won't draw, refresh the page, it'll draw, refresh the page, it won't draw. It just goes on and on like that, and it's, it's just weird. So that's version 0.21, footer. So that's the framework and the map. The charts are using a library called Chartist.js. It's not using D3 anymore because I don't need the charts to do anything weird. And uh, D3 is awesome, but it's also hard. And Chartist is uh, smaller and not. So I'm using Chartist for the charts. Now, this is the really cool thing in which helped me make this project much this refactoring much quicker than I thought it'd be and that's Vue.js. Vue.js is a uh, it's a component system kind of like React. Uh, it's called Reactive Components for Modern Web Interfaces. But I've used React for different stuff. GeoPortal uses React and I've been trying Vue.js for a few things. Vue.js is just really great. It's like React only kind of easier, and it does things that are a lot more user friendly. Uh, it does two-way data binding, so you're not flinging callbacks over all over the place. Uh, it's it's just really nice, and it made me enabling to make this refactoring really quick and in a super clean modular way. You can't read any of that. Let me see here. Uh, Bigger, 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 bigger. Moo cow. So, I import a bunch of crap here. Each one of these things is a view component. So your side nav, metadata, year control, data table, scatter plot, trend chart, table of contents. That's a thing above the map. Uh, the map itself, the search, and the thing that does the embed code. Those are all different Vue.js components. And when I set those up, each component 
has a data state that it maintains and watches and modifies. And I have two different ones. I have a shared state, which all the components share, and that's for stuff that when it changes someplace, another component needs to know about. And a private state for some that has things that only that component needs to worry about. So I instantiate all my components and off it goes. A component looks like, uh, let's see, uh, what do you want to look at? Let's look at, what would be interesting? Scan the plot. Component looks like this, and it's really kind of neat. It's a, uh, this is a Vue.js, how you'd make a component for enterprise kindy kind of stuff. Now that they need to wear a tie, and like the word enterprise it makes me feel like I'm about to go on a voyage. But it's for making components for like big apps. It's like when you look at their the, the standard, how they do it in a Hello World example, how they do it and you'd want to do it for a big app kind of component is like this. Where you have your template. This is HTML. You could do it in you know Jade or something else. Your script. And this is what sets up the actual component. And what I'm telling it to do here is watch if the year changes or the selected set changes or the metric data changes from my shared state, it's going to re-render that chart. And that these are method, this render chart is just a method it's going to do. It's all very straightforward. Uh, this is some animation that I kind of gave up on. And the little methods and functions. And down here you have CSS for your component. Now what I do to have the CSS be isolated so it doesn't leak out from this component is my com overall component will have a class and I'll nest everything in that class and run post CSS's post CSS nesting module so it'll unnest this so you end up with a dot scatter plot h1 and a dot scatter plot span. But doing it this way makes it cleaner to write and it makes sure this h1 tag from this component doesn't leak out anywhere else. Now I should say the styles I have in these components aren't completely independent because they're kind of tweaking the settings of material design light. To make them completely independent you'd essentially do like a normalize or CSS reset on the components you're using in each one and then do those components. That sounded like too much work. So if you took this component out of Material Design Light and site and put it inside Bootstrap site, you might need to tweak the CSS a bit. That's what a component looks like, and that's how it shares data. Go back to main.js. These components are completely, completely isolated. So let's say we don't want to search, people know where they are. Uh, we don't care about the data table, we don't need that. And scatter plots, only nerds like scatter plots. And embed code, bah! You don't need any embed code. Gotta get rid of this comma now. Hit save. And it's uh, watching now. So it's going back over, and our search is gone. Our uh, scatter plot is gone. Our embed is gone. Is that all I got rid of? Oh, and our data table is gone. So notice we have some stuff selected. It's not showing the data table at all. We just got rid of those whole components and the whole app keeps working. I can get rid of the map. I can get rid of the table of contents. I can get rid of any of these components. They are completely 100% isolated. So that component, there's nothing in that component dependent on anything else. How awesome is that? So I, you can add new components very easily. You can take components out. If you want to say screw around with the search, you only screw around with the search component. You don't have to worry about it leaking out into anything else. And that makes the code very up, up, comma, comma, Tobin. Now I have to restart my my watch. And now I can save this. 
and it's got all its stuff again it's got its data table uh, this one only has one year or well it's got a scatter plot it's search and and it's uh, embed stuff so that's it's the view made I the, the thing with people that use Vue.js is you really can't shut them up from saying how great Vue.js is. So I'll just say it's awesome and then I'll shut up. But it's really, really good and it made refactoring this site uh, so much easier than it could have been. And the way all the code is isolated, it just makes it so clean and so easy to modify. With the old site, it's a little bit like Jenga. If I want to change this little function over here, it might ripple all over the place. This is totally isolated and makes it very clean. So, what else am I going to do to this? Uh, I need to do the thing where I make a tutorial video on, on customizing it for your own site, and that'll help me fix some things as I go through that. I want to animate the charts a bit. Uh, I want some hover events like um, the old one on the legend. You could hover and see where that stuff is on the map. I want to re-enable or, or add that functionality in. There are some bits and pieces here and there that I'm going to futz with. But overall, it's in good shape and feel free to use it. We are not using it yet. We are, uh, we are a slow and careful people. Um, but I'm hoping to be using it soon and replacing our current site. I'll give you a link to the new repository on GitHub. Uh, if you spun any bugs, let me know. Feel free to have fun with it. And that's it. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye.